This is the final lathe in use, so this is the one we're going to be building in this film. Hi, well in this film I'm going to show you how to make a rapid build pole lathe. So a really quick build on this one. And you might be saying, well hang on, I've already done a pole lathe build and that was the traditional nice oak job. This one's going to be a quick and portable one. I know some people haven't got the time to do a big pole lathe, so I'm going to show a quick way of doing it using prepared timber. And I'm going to be using this one because I've volunteered to do a bit of um, pole laving with children. And it suddenly occurred to me my pole lathe's far too tall, so this will do the job because it will be height adjustable as well. Well, I'll give all the dimensions as we go through the making, but the, the main requirement is some nice joinery quality softwood. And you could use hardwood if you've got it and you've got the budget for it, but I'm using joinery grade softwood here and it's 4x2 in inches, or what's that, 100 by 15 metric if you like metric, but I think I'll stick to inches because I like inches. So 4x2 and I say I'll knock up the bits and then give you the dimensions so that you can chop them down if you want to have a go at making one yourself. Well, the first job is to cut up some timber. Now, I could use my hand saw, but this is a rapid build, so I'm using my chop saw. Bit noisy, but it's quick. I have done quite a bit of cutting here, so I'll just run through all the dimensions for you. If you have a pencil, you can jot them down. So it's all 4x2 softwood, and the lathe bed itself is 5 foot long. So lathe bed 5 foot. The legs have three sections, because they're like cantilevered legs. So it's the short section, and you need two of these, and that's 2 foot 2 inches. So the short section of the leg is 2 foot 2 inches. You need two of those. The medium section of the leg is three foot six inches. And again, you need two of those. That's three foot six, two pieces. And then the long bit of the leg is four foot six. And again, you need two of those. That's four foot six inches. Now for the lathe poppets, you need two of them, so this is the wood, these four pieces for one poppet. So you need a long piece, which is 16 inches long, a shorter piece, that is 12 inches long, and then two spacer pieces, which are both four inches, so they're four by fours basically. So 16, 12, 4, 4. And again, it's all in the same wood, all in 4 by 2 softwood. Well, I'm just cutting the upright leg parts and I'll run through the dimensions of these in just a minute. I'll just do a bit of cutting and then run through the dimensions of what's what. Having bands on these top leg brackets, I'm now drilling out some holes in them for bolts. And again, I'll show you in just a minute. Sorry if it's a bit frustrating drilling and sawing but if I get these bits done I can then show you what it looks like and give you the measurements as well. So I'm just drilling a series of holes down this. And this is to make the whole pole lathe height adjustable which will be very useful. In the same way I'm now drilling the leg brackets, the smaller leg brackets and then the larger leg brackets. So I'll drill these and then I'll show you how it all fits together. Okay, well I did say it might be easier to see this once it's actually set up and Here's the three leg construction. So that's the longest leg, the middle leg, and then the shortest leg. So just to give some dimensions again, because I know I gave them for the long leg, it's, the long leg is four foot six. 
and all I've done, I've bored a hole through about two and a half inches off the end and that's the bolt going through for the stand there. Another bolt hole which is very roughly about 14 and a half inches down from the end. So basically a foot down from that one, so that gap's about a foot. There Tom the cat is coming through. Same sort of idea here, these two bolt holes are a foot apart. So if you just drill those the same, you'll get this configuration. At the moment it's on its highest, which looks about right. And then these adjusters, so you can, have, you can vary your height. These adjusters are all spaced at two inches, and there are five of them. So they're going down one, two, three, four, and then I've got it in number five at the moment down there. And they're all two inches apart. Bolting onto the bed, again, just two bolts going through. So I'll give you a walk around in a second, you'll see what I mean. So let's have a walk around and you'll see what I mean about the construction. I'll just run through those very short legs in a minute and just give you a dimension check on those. That's the bed across the top. Same construction, exactly the same the other side. So the legs made up of the three components. Let's take a closer look at that shorter leg and you'll see what I mean. We have a hungry cat here today, by the way. So just to recap on the shorter leg, this is it. It's two foot, two inches long. And I've cut a recess here for a foot. Okay, so that recess is basically just the thickness of this part of the leg. And then a bolt goes through. This bolt, let's just give the dimensions, so you've got it exactly. That's at seven inches down from the top of the post. So that bolt's at seven inches down and it simply goes through to secure the long leg. So seven inches down for that one. These two bolts hold the bed. So again, there they are. And just put them wherever you feel it's strongest. I'll put them an inch down, and I think it's two and a half inches down. No, three inches down actually. It's an inch down, an inch down, and three inches down. So I've put them, so I'm using four by two here. These are the holes for the adjustment, two inches apart. And I've got my bolt at the moment on the bottom one. I hope that's all okay. Any queries, just message me below and I'll get back to you. But hopefully that's enough for you to make this basic frame. So the next job now is to make the poppets. And I'll get onto that next. Well, I find the best way to make the spikes for the centres of the lathe is to do them on the grinder. So I've got some studding here and I'm just going to grind a round end on it basically. So um, solder up. Uh, I'm just finishing it off in the fine wheel. Not a bad little tip actually, just for turning is to have a, a nut on the stud and then turn the stud and you get a more even point I think like that actually. Anyway, there you are. One point down, one to go. There we are. Two nice points that I've ground up on the grinding wheel. So it's just from studding. It works quite well. Right, well, I've now ground the worst of the thread off of this section so that's not rough on the hands because obviously when you're turning a crank you don't want to hurt your hands. If it's this thread, it'd be quite rough. So I've taken the worst of it off. I can always give it a bit more of a file or put a wooden handle on later, but it's the easiest way. So kept the screw thread good there to the point. I'll then blow torch it, do a bend and have a crank. Uh, that's the first bend done, so now just one more bend for the handle. So same procedure. 
well exactly the same procedure for the other bend so there you are one crank handle just just heat them up with a blowtorch get it to red heat and then do the bend and it, it goes fine actually and that's quite a quick easy way one can if you want to the later date I have ground this a bit smoother one could put a wooden handle on there or even a bit of metal pipe actually as a handle would work quite well so that's the crank handle and the other end of the lathe made so that's good well I'm now on the poppet construction and because it's a single bed bar all I'm doing is essentially having the longer bit, the shorter bit of the poppet, two sandwiching blocks and then the bar will go through here and the centres, the winding centre, will go through that end like that. So all I've got to do is basically screw, maybe put some glue on at the same time, this construction together and make sure that my central hole is the same sort of width as the timber. Now what one can do to make it a little bit of a looser fit is actually just line with either cardboard or plastic just line inside here to make that a tiny bit wider than the section of timber that I'm using. So what I'm going to do actually is just get an old plastic milk bottle and wedge that in between. It's not going to be much but probably just a little bit of spacing is not a bad idea. <laughs> just as a quick aside I um, popped into my little hardware shop this morning to get some more screws and on the way back what do I see someone's ripping out a kitchen and just shows how it pays to always be on the sort of lookout for bits of timber there's look at this worktop just being chucked out and I mean I do quite a lot of skip I, I do ask permission I call it skip raiding even so and um, I mean this is solid beach about an inch and a quarter thick roughly something like that very nice condition fairly wide glued together boards it's obviously an old kitchen worktop but I mean I can do something with that and it just shows keep an eye on those skips and you never know what you'll find. Talking of my local hardware shop I always find it's a very good one actually I'm very lucky but it really does pay to buy these boxes of screws you know as a whole box rather than individually and they're so much cheaper I mean UK £3.20 a box and that seems really good to me for quite long two and a half three inch screws so yeah can send off for them but actually I like to try and support my local shops where I can and I'm lucky to have a good hardware shop. Same with the bolts, I mean I, they sell them separately, it's one of these nice old fashioned places. But certainly to, try not to buy screws from like the big DIY chains because they t tend to charge in the UK quite a lot more and um, often the local shops have the boxes. You'll see with my drilling I'm actually putting the holes quite a way out to the edge and the reason for that is on the lower part of the poppets I'm going to have to hollow out a couple of channels for wedges to go through to actually secure them to the bench or to the, to the top of the lathe bed so that's why those are spaced out quite a bit. Other thing perhaps just a little detail it's worth having the flat of your grain so your grain running across there so that it slides across the bed nicely. You could put the end grain uppermost, but it wouldn't run quite so smoothly as if you have the grain going across ways. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this just to hold it all together. Probably not essential, but it won't do any harm. Also, if it does get wet, this is waterproof glue, so it will hold quite well, which is nice. Enough. Right, so get that there. It's all about right. Some screws, and we'll lob them in. Quite like these power drills with their screwdriver chucks. I, I wasn't going to bother to um, clamp but actually I think I do need to. So I've just put a clamp in there. And here we go. Oops. Bit loose on the chuck.
Now with the top spacer, I'm not going to glue it in case I have to shift it later on. So if this wood expands or contracts, it could find that actually, my, this, assume this is the lathe bed, then I want it to fit, but I don't want it so tight I can't move to pop it. So I've got a little gap there, it's about half a millimetre, it's no more than that. And um, I think that's probably enough, because the wedge will take up any slack. But I want to be able to move this pop it up and down the bed allowing a little bit for expansion if it gets wet and um, as I say I'm not going to glue this one I'm just going to screw it so then if I do need to adjust it later if the wood warped badly or something I could. I'm now just securing the top piece to the poppet so the lathe bed will go through here and again I'm just screwing I'm not actually gluing this time in case I have to take it apart and slightly adapt it all. The crank handle and the tailstock piece will be going through there, so I'll be drilling that through later on and the tool rest will rest on here. So you do want to get this fairly smoothly flat or lined up the same, then the tool rest can go across there. So I'll just screw these up, get the other one done, same thing, and that'll be the poppets largely on the way. Well I just assembled this and put in my dummy lathe bed I thought, gosh, that's a tight fit. It's not going to slide very well. And of course I realised I'd missed out the little bit. I said I put a bit of spacer in just to make it slide a bit better. Well, I'm using a bit of um, milk bottle carton I've just cut up. So I'm going to now re-secure that with the milk bottle carton just between the layers, see if that helps. Well, I've now put a plastic spacer in and yes, that's sliding quite happily. There's very little give but there is enough sliding. I'll just show you underneath. There we are, that's the edge of the plastic side of the milk bottle container, the spacer. So I've just put it on the lower join. I haven't bothered on this upper one. Right, the next job is to make a couple of wedges. And I'm using a bit of oak here, just because I've got it as an off cut. Um, eight inches long, and then two inches High, and it tapers one to eight so it basically goes down to an inch so inch that end two inches that end about an inch thick this is about three quarters ideally it'd be a tiny bit thicker but I'll use it as I have it so two of those <laughs> so there are two wedges eight inches long inch there two inches there so there for the poppets I've set the poppets up on a dummy lathe bed really just to mark these holes for the wedges. Now, what you want to do when you set this up is have the thin end of the wedge pointing out this way to the longer piece, so as I've got it now. And you want the flat end of the wedge going through, so like that. So it will go, it'll basically go in under here. So what you need to do is mark the hole for it to go in under there. Yep. So all you need to do is have it go in a bit of the way something like that. Just hold it there and mark it. So I haven't fully inserted that wedge. It's only protruding the other side by if half an inch. So it's just going through. Quite a lot sticking out, two inches sticking out this end in effect because that's about six inches thick. So what I now need to do is bring those marks round and I'll know where to make my hole. So just to show you a bit more closely what I mean, I've marked pencil lines along here and here. So that's by just having the wedge in position, mainly sticking out in front of the camera here. So not going completely sort of the way through and just marking those lines. We'll bring them along the front, we'll then drill out a mortise for the wedge to go through. It's easier to make the mortise bigger, it's obviously <laughs> not possible to make it smaller. Well, you can put a bigger wedge in I suppose. So I'd rather start with a smaller mortise and then if need be widen it out. Well I'm going to drill out the angled hole first and then I will drill down a hole going straight, straight down. So to get your angled hole, 
you want to follow the angle there, of course you can use the wedge. So if that helps, line your drill bit up with the wedge. It's all a bit hit and miss. I've now drilled through the angled hole in one of them and as luck would have it, it's come out pretty well spot on, which is great. It doesn't usually go quite so well as that. Anyway, idea now is to drill a vertical straight hole, now not an angled one this time, but a straight one, and then that will meet up and then chisel out the, the waste. Seems to be a lot of um, wood cutting going on today around here. I live in a town that um, is fairly sort of rural in quite a few parts. Just a little tip actually while you're chiseling all of this out, put a bit of dummy wood in where the lathe bed's going to go and then you'll stop breakout underneath. There are, so that's actually what you want to get to. Sorry, one other little tip. <laughs> I said put that line, draw it round from the top. Just make it a bit more because what you obviously want is for your piece of wood, your wedge, to stick through slightly so it hits the underside of the bed. So that's clearer there. Just take the mortise slightly higher than the line at the bottom of the bed and then you'll be fine. So just make that your rubs then. That's the whole idea. Well this is the sort of thing you want to end up with. So it's a couple of poppets with their wedges. If you look inside the wedges just stand proud very slightly as they get banged in. So that's what will keep the poppets in position. Right, the final stage with the poppets is to do the drilling for the centers. So that's for your crank handle and also for your tail end stock point. And the best way to do this really is to take a bit of wood you're using as your tool rest and just mark along there. on both pieces and then continue that line round to the center and then drill down and obviously drill at a size which is slightly less than the diameter of your crank and ditto for your tailstock. Well the tailstock you can bolt in so it's not quite so critical but your crank you actually want it turning so I'll put a bit of oil on the actual crank and as I say make the hole a little bit smaller millimeter or two smaller just so it goes in nice and tight. For the upright poles for the bungee I'm actually using these two sections of two by two and they're nearly eight foot long it's just an inch or so short of eight foot long so if you go with eight foot long the actual bungee um, part so the part above the lathe bed to where the bungee hole goes through needs to be something like 70 inches if you want to get a good number of turns on your lathe. So make, make these poles 70 inches above the lathe bed and you'll be fine. I've now got the poppets in position on the lathe and they're holding really very firmly with these wedges. So that's, that's a good system. I've made a tool rest out of a bit of scrap wood. So it's just slightly beveled off, not very much. There we are. And that just rests against there. One does need some spacers, so I'm going to need to make a few little wooden spacers to bring it out if I'm turning something of big diameter. But that's the general idea of the tool rest. There's the crank handle all working. So I'll get the uprights installed now. As I say, you want those to be about 70 inches above the surface of the bed. It's above that surface. So here's the finished pole lathe all made up. So the treadle assembly for this will be exactly the same as the one I've made in one of the other videos. So either the other pole lathe video or I made an adjustable treadle assembly in a specific video. So there you are, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll actually try this out at a public event which is going to be a bit dodgy but um, We'll see how it goes, and perhaps I'll get a little bit of filming from that. For concept. <laughs>